so this is the last bunch the last video of my first half of the ultimate top 100 so it should be exciting and then we will get to top 50 to top one which is really cool but without further ado let's just go with uh, number 60. my number 60 is a tiling game but instead of tiles you're using cards and this is honchu really dig honchu because it's also extremely easy to learn and teach uh, it has this cool patching and tiling uh, aspect where you can put the cards underneath or on top you have the resources you have those landscapes and you're trying to get the points various landscapes give you various points and you get the resources and factories really easy nothing really uh, big in there the cool mechanic extra mechanic there is this kind of a trick taking game sort of a I mean like um, you are putting down the cards they have numbers whoever has the biggest number will choose out of those cards the first so you don't have to choose your own cards from your own hand you can choose the other cards as well and that's where you can spend extra resources to boost your cards number by 60 to get it to get to choose first and so on and then if the first player to to sort of a uh, boost uh, the, his card with a resource will basically determine which resource can be used in this trick-taking round and yeah that's that's really engaging this part with the uh with the tiling part which is extremely easy and then you just count points whoever wins the game it's a small package it's from Lauda the pellet but Rene games has picked it up as well which is cool i think this game res deserves more attention we have our review of this game as well so go check it out it's honshu number 60 number 59 is a game that we overlooked for for quite a few i mean like not many years but <laughs> i mean for a few years probably maybe uh because we looked at this game for a long time it's from matagot and it was like mm, i don't know it doesn't look that exciting but eventually we figured out that we want to play it and that's expedition northwest passage Be I, I think it, this game was hunting me a long time Eventually, it was like, we should just buy it and try it. We got it, we tried it, we really, really like this game. So, you're, ex you're in this expedition, you're going through the sea, which can freeze, so you're going through the sea and ice, so you have to switch between ship and your s slates, or how do you call it, uh, and then get, to the, get, the, get the expedition done. You need to get to one point and back to your start position. And you can get lost in this uh, expedition and die. Your crew, all your crew dies and so on. So that's a sad story. But yeah, it has this tiling mechanic, this, this sun mechanic, how uh, part of the board freezes so it becomes ice so you can uh, go there on on this on the slate and then you can then some part of it is the sea so you have to go there by ship and you need to move really smartly it's it's all about like where and when should you switch with those and where and when should where you should put the tiles and get the most points out of it there's a little bit of that set collection to it as well and there is that worker placement so a really nice and it looks stylish it looks stylish it's a it's this game is under the radar, I think. It should get more attention. It's something we want to review at some point as well. But a really cool uh, thematic game about the expedition. That's Expedition Northwest Passage number 59. Number 58 is a race game. And we are not into race games uh, usually. We just it, It's just n not as exciting for us. But this one is different because it has the drafting, it has the dice, and it just has a different feel and look and such. This is Steampunk Rally. Steampunk Rally has this kind of a drafting, uh, a drafting phase where you get the cards, you can then spend those cards in order to get the resources or to get their special abilities or get them for later use or get them as parts into your machine and you're out of the cards basically like a tiling aspect out of the cards you're building the machine uh, which will have different slots for dice and then you use dice these are basically the resources they are different colors they um, activate different parts of the machine and you are 
yeah, they're basically putting the dice into the slots in order to activate those uh, slots in the machine that will, for example, make the machine move forward or make the machine uh, less prone to to curve uh, curves and and mountains and uh, landscapes and such. So you're trying to race basically whoever gets to the finish line first and further will win the game. But I mean. Uh, eventually, this is more than just a race game. It's it's this kind of a tiling, euro type, resource management game to it as well with the card drafting, and I really do uh, like this. And it looks really nice. It looks cartoony, uh, but once you start playing, it has quite a quite much game in it. That's Steampunk Rally number fifty eight, number fifty seven. This should be yeah. This should be my favorite roll and write game. Although you're not really writing that much, you are drawing. But I mean like you're writing and drawing. That's Saint Malo. So in Saint Malo you have the dry eraser markers, you have the boards, and you roll the dice and you get those various dice and you have your own kind of a grid where you are putting down the houses or the walls uh, against the pirate attacks that will occur at some point. And then you are putting down the different people uh, into this grid, basically, maybe you're basically building up your city, um, and you're drawing everything with your dry eraser markers, and it's it's like a roll and write game. You roll the dice, and then you uh, mark it down what you what you have in your dice, and that's it. But it's extremely cool. Uh, it's extremely nice game, and the box cover looks so boring, extremely boring. Yet. Uh, when you get to it, when you get to, to the game itself, it looks really cool on the on the table. It looks really cool when you draw those things in there however you want. And it's a smart game, smart placement game, where you place what things, when you draw what things. So, St. Malo, my number 57. Number 56 is a dice placement game, which is similar to Sagrada, and which is, in my opinion, better than Sagrada because it's meteor. And that's role player. In roleplayer, you are building up your RPG ca character and its stats, and you're doing that through the different dice. And you have kind of a, you don't have really restrictions in how you put the dice into different slots, but I mean, you want them to have to be in the in in a particular order with particular colors in order to score points. If not, you will not score any points. That's it. And you have different st stats. You have different cards that will like. This is your attribute, this is your backstory, uh, this is your uh, race or whatever. And then you fulfill that. And it's, it's a puzzly, abstract type of game. Although you kind of feel like you're building up your character. But I mean, like on the other hand, it's a little bit abstract through those dice where you are putting the dice into, into those slots and you can get the special abilities of those. So you can, special abilities give, give you more opportunities to manipulate those dice. And you're basically building up this greed, a uh, puzzly greed of that, of those dice. That's how I, I see it. And you have some special cards, so, which will give you some special abilities that you can grab, you can buy, which is really, really cool. And it just probably has more, yeah, not probably, but it definitely has more meat to it than Sagrada. Uh, but I do like this kind of a puzzle, puzzly aspect in the game. And that's role player number 56. Number 55 is a more, I would say, social game, but really different game. Um, it's Escape from Aliens in Outer Space. Escape from Aliens in Outer Space uses the boards and riders and markers, and that's it. And, oh, sorry, some cards as well. So, um, you are divided into kind of a... You, each one of you gets the roles, and there are two teams. There are aliens and there are humans. You don't know... Like when you get your role, you don't know who the other players are, like if he's an alien or he's a human. So you need to figure this out. And then you will start moving from your side of the board and then the other player from his side of the board. But basically you have this kind of a book like that. And then you, have, then you basically write your movement down in that book. And that's it. Everyone has his own book. But you have the same map, basically. You have different maps, but you choose the same map for the start of the game. And then you write it down and you pick the cards all the time. And sometimes some cards say that uh, you don't have to make noise. Like some cards are special abilities, some cards are red, which means that you 
will make noise so other people will most likely know where you are at that point so aliens try to eat the humans or whatever do with them kill the humans and humans try to get to one of the pods the the spaceships in order to escape this uh, alien base and yeah whoever escapes is the winner of the game and um, that that's extremely cool but whenever an alien catches a human that human becomes an alien so kind of that zombie type of thing as well there and it's extremely tense because basically all you're doing you're, you're sitting around the table with your own notepad and writing things down and taking the cards and you have some special abilities you have some bluffing going on as well a lot of bluffing that's it this is this is a lot of bluffing in this game but you feel tense like you don't really know if the alien is near you enough or not, if you will escape or not. And at some point you understand that, oh, right, so this alien right now, I, I, like, I already understood that Alina is an alien and she's like one greed away from me. And I'm like, oh my God. Um, so I hope she doesn't, she doesn't like choose to move into, into my greed and so on. So you also have to attack in order to get there. So you can attack uh, in, in order to uh, see if you if you get if you catch humans and such so this escape from aliens in outer space uh, that's number 55 really cool tense game number 54 is a game or let's say two games but let's say i'm gonna say one game it's king of tokyo um but king of new york is basically the same one with a little bit more meat so you can vary the you have variability of those games basically you can choose one or the other basically they are the same game almost the same game but maybe at some point you want to play meteor one maybe you want to play simpler one on other occasion and king of Tokyo is a yahtzee game where you roll dice and you use those dice with the symbols in order to attack to get the energy to get uh, basically some cards which will give you special abilities and you're trying to get to certain points, amount of points, then you win the game. And uh, there is that place of uh, Tokyo, where whenever you get into that place of Tokyo, you will generate points each turn, but then everyone outside the Tokyo will attack you. On the other hand, if you attack in the Tokyo, you will attack everyone at once outside the Tokyo. Really nice touch. And this game looks childish, it looks cartoonish, and we avoided it at some point, but then we got this game, we played this game, it's so much fun. It's just, it's just a pure Yahtzee game with, with cool, I would say it looks cool. It's, now it looks cool, but when you, when you finally play it, it looks cool. And those big chunky dice as well, so the King of New York adds to it. But you need the expansions, you need the, the power up expansion, because you need those decks so every player becomes a kind of a separate monster with this deck. because. You have this evolution decks where at some point you can draw the card from that deck and this is your special ability that you can use for yourself and nobody else can use it. Cool. Uh, that's King of Tokyo or King of New York, uh, number 54. Number 53 is a Kickstarter game. Uh, it didn't come out yet. <laughs> it didn't, didn't come out yet. Yeah, it's, it's a game that we previewed and it's Petricor. Now, why it's on my list and why it's so high on my list uh, is that, of course, we previewed the game, we didn't have the final components, but basically we had the final rules and uh, some of the art or most of the art was final as well, just the components will be better, bigger, whatever. But I don't care because I really like the game, it's different. You are representing clouds and you are gathering uh, raindrops into the clouds and then basically uh, you have the rain and then you, uh, the rain goes on, on to crop and the crop starts uh, um, growing and then you get points of that. So basically they're the different, uh, this is an area control game. Uh, but with this cool cloud theme to it. So you want to be a cloud, you get into thunder cloud, and then you, yeah, area majority game there. Uh, but you're trying to score the points on those different tiles by ma manipulating your uh, cloud or the other cloud and raindrops and such. So a really different, really nice theme. And you have those seasons as well. And those different seasons will occur. There's the voting on what seasons will occur what special abilities will occur on that turn, sort of events. 
and it adds to the game, adds to the interaction as well. It looks different, looks cool, it's unique in my opinion. That's Petricor number 53. Check out our preview of, uh, of the game that was on Kickstarter. We have it on our YouTube channel as well. So number 52 is a party game. I would say probably the first, I mean like if you, yeah, it's like totally party game and word game, the first one in our collection that we thought, whatever, let's try it. And then it was like a blast and it's code names. I can add code names pictures here as well because the same as with King of Tokyo, King of New York, basically the same game, but uh, either prefer words or pictures. I don't know what I like more. Pictures are probably a little bit more difficult, but I would just mix and match it and play sometimes a word game and then a picture game. But code names, um, you are divided into teams and you are trying to, like one is playing the, the master and the other players from that team are trying to guess the word. So you have to give a clue of, uh, the clue must consist of one word and the number. Number corresponds to how many of the words on the table correspond to the clue you gave out. For example, you say, uh, uh, you say brown three and you're trying to sort of uh, make the players guess the bear and maybe uh, the wood and whatever. So, um, and it's, it's extremely cool. Yes, it's a quiet game. It's not a party game where you shout and blah, we're all good and we're having so much fun. But we are having so much fun. Even in this kind of a silent game where you are thinking. Yes, it's a smart party game. But it's extremely cool how you can give out the clues and you're trying to get more words in one turn and how easy it is to learn and to teach a learning tool for English words as well. But if you want language independent, go with the pictures. So you have variability. I really, really like code names. That's number 52 code names. And finally, number 51. Number 51 is a game that I heard about, um, how to basically, how to explain it. When I heard about it, I was really excited because it's from the company I really like, it's Space Cowboys. But then when I heard about the theme, I wasn't that excited anymore because the theme was zombies. But it's Hit Z Road. And yeah, and first of all, Martin Wallace is not the designer we particularly enjoy or like, but here and with Via Nebula, for example, which is not on my top 100, but I mean, um, Via Nebula was really cool game from him, different game from him, really light. And Hitsy Road is sort of at the same feel, like it's light. And you're trying, basically you are trying to survive uh, the path um, where in the, in the zombie apocalypse and you have those different cards, different paths consisting of cards and you do the bidding, uh, you do the bidding when you, where you spend the resources but the resources must be spent during your journey through the cards in order to get through those cards otherwise you will start uh, getting bitten and lose your survivors and you can be out of the game. So the, the, the resources are really like when you get to the f further into the game, you feel like, oh my God, I don't have enough resources. I will not survive it. And that's, that's the feel. And that, I think that draws out the theme as well, because that's the thing, that's the apocalypse. You shouldn't have enough resources. You sh should have like, I have little resources. I need to do the most with those little resources and survive another day. And I like how it looks. It's extremely stylish. Uh, it was we nominated it for for the best artwork, I think, or graphical. Um, I don't remember the one of the awards we did on Blender uh, last uh, last year. Or at, the end, at the beginning of this year, probably. Yeah, at the beginning of this year. So, yeah, it's it looks it looks amazing. It's like a child who created a a game in this zombie apocalypse, and you're playing this game. And it looks extremely nice and it plays really nice. Yes, you're rolling dice at some point and you're going through the cards, you're picking the routes, whoever won the uh, auction will pick the route first and then the second and third. And it's not hard to explain, it's mostly iconography. I just really dig this game. It's, it's something 
I would love to pull out and play with even non-gamers. I think I can teach them this game. So that was 51 hits the road. And that's it for my first half of uh, top 100. So let me see. Oh yeah, we're getting, we're, yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's, it's going to be an exciting journey through my ultimate top 100 because those top 50 games are, are top notch. You most likely heard about them. Uh, you most likely played them. You probably won't agree with some of my choices. But overall, if you will still find a game which was under the radar and I have mentioned here, then that's, that's great. I think doing my top 100, my initial mission wasn't just to like show you what my favorite 100 games are, but also to talk about the games that deserve the attention, at least from me, which means that maybe they deserve attention from you as well. Maybe you just didn't know about them and now you know about them and you look at the review and you realize that, oh, that can be right up my alley. So thank you very much for watching. Until the next time where we start with my top 50 of all time. Thank you. Bye bye.